Hi everybody in Guitar Land. Um, I got uh, I get a lot of emails and direct messages um, asking me about uh, legato playing and some of the uh, some of the techniques that I use in, in my playing um, the involving the legato style, which is um, the hammer-ons and pull-offs. Um, you see very little uh, with the right hand; it's all mostly left hand. And uh, so, uh, in this video, I'm going to go over a few of the techniques that I use in my playing that uh, that I felt were were instrumental in helping me put together um, a very clean and fluid sounding legato style um, and some of the longer runs uh, that I'll do and uh, you know, hopefully they help you out uh, in your playing or you you know may spark uh, some ideas for yourself that you can incorporate into your own playing. Uh, most of what um, you just saw me do there involves three main patterns. Um, they're based on the major scale and modes of the major scale. And um, I usually will start off with smaller, the, these patterns in smaller increments and then build on them. Uh, the three main patterns that, that, uh, that I will use in the, in the major, uh, major scale in its modes would be uh, what I call whole step to whole step. Okay, um, in this case it's B string. It's going to be the 10th fret, 12th and 14, which are going to be the A, B and C sharp. And then repeat that same whole step to whole step pattern on the E string, D, E, and F sharp. So by picking one note on each of the strings and then hammering on to the other two, you get the idea. And then to make it a little bit more interesting, I will descend the same run using pull-offs, or the same pattern, as you say. Okay, and that's that whole step to whole step pattern over a six note sequence over two strings, the B and the E string. The next pattern I'll incorporate into that will be a half step to whole step pattern, uh, which will be on the ninth, 10th, and 12th. G sharp A and B, um, C sharp D and E on the same two strings, and that's just a half step to a whole step. Where it starts to kind of take shape and become more fluid is linking those two together, and you do that by sliding from one position to the next. See, there's very little right hand at all. I'm actually only picking one, maybe two notes of that. The rest of it is all the hammer-ons and pull-offs. By using the sliding technique, it's very easy. I slide down from the whole steps, and then back up. Okay, the third pattern in this group, uh, again, staying in the same major scale formation, would be the whole step to half step pattern, seven, nine, and 10 on both strings. And so you can see how by using that the combinations of those groupings, the whole step to whole step, half step to whole step, and whole step whole step to half step, um, using the sliding between them, you can put together some kind of inter you know some interesting runs. Um, another thing that I'll incorporate into that is breaking it down into an octave idea, where I'll take the, like a six note sequence, slide it into the next six note sequence, and then I'll drop down to the next octave, repeating the same pattern of the whole step to whole step, half step to whole step, but on the next two lower strings. So now instead of a, a two string, maybe 12 note pattern, 
and get a four string 24 note pattern. Um, and if you incorporate in that down, move it down one further octave, you can go down to the fifth and sixth string using the exact same patterns and uh, the same technique. <laughs> Okay, so the octaves is a great way to visualize the guitar neck and break it down so that once you're comfortable, you know, in some of these sequences, you can expand on them, make the runs longer, make them seem even more fluid. And um, it's something that I do a lot. Um, and it's, again, a very easy way to visualize the guitar neck um, and make, you know, make some, some kind of cooler, uh, incorporate some cooler things into your playing. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to touch on, too, is you know that you can play it like that and just the sequential three note sequences um that's you know that's one i will i will do a lot of new, different numeric values uh, okay like a groups of threes um which is kind of cool but i think something that's more interesting is when you start breaking up the values into different numeric sequences um and i'll give you an example of that one thing that I like to do will be like uh, a four note and a six note sequence in that same grouping of patterns, but it takes on a completely different characteristic when you when you break it into different numeric values. And then a four note sequence, and then like a six note sequence. When you combine them. just becomes a lot more interesting. And again, you can experiment with your own sequences as far as numeric values, whether it be threes, threes and fours, any, anything. Uh, any, you know, it's gonna change the, the rhythmic value of it. Um, and again, it's gonna, I think the main thing is to just, once you understand the techniques, to incorporate them into, you know, and find your own voice. Um, create your own style of playing and something that you're comfortable with. It. And that's the stuff that's going to set you apart from every other guitar player out there. Um, because there's, we're all saying, playing the same 12 notes. So, uh, one other thing I'd like to touch on here, and it's, I don't think a lot of people do address it um, in instructional videos or um, things like that, is the muting aspect of it, which I think tends to be undervalued. Uh, doing all these hammer-ons and pull-offs, um, they sound really cool. Uh, but you can tend to get a lot of open string noise and a lot of kind of semi-muted or, or dead notes in there. And the muting technique that I use involves um, both hands. I'll use the, like the flesh on the back of my index finger to mute behind um, the notes in front of it to help deaden the, you know, so you don't get a lot of open string noise. And again, it's it's kind of a feel thing. You have to you know you have to experiment with it and and try it and uh, and you'll feel like you'll actually feel the vibration of the string in the back part of your index finger if your muting technique is correct. Um, the other aspect is in your right hand, which is typically what more people are associate with muting. Um, and you'll just need to find that spot. You know, whatever style tailpiece or bridge you're using, they're all going to have a different point at which the note will ring clearly but we'll have uh, the muted aspect of it as well so that you're not getting a lot of open string noise. Um, and again, you may have to learn to adjust your, you know, your hand position uh, to facilitate that, but it's a combination of the two. I think without using both um, techniques, uh, if you use too much right hand, you lose some of the note clarity and it sounds too muted. Um, and only using the left hand technique, you don't get enough muting. So experiment on your own. Um, you know, and find those sweet spots in there where you're able to, you know, to get an effective, um, totally get an effective, you know, run that's clean and fluid. So, um, that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on, you know, for this time. Uh, again, you can incorporate this into the major scale, all modes of the major scale using these three basic shapes. Um, the same techniques can be incorporated into other more exotic scales like harmonic minor, melodic minor. This positions do this. The shapes change a little bit, but I'll go into that in another time. So I hope uh, some, this has helped you a little bit as far as maybe uh, learning a little bit of uh, legato technique and some things you can incorporate into your playing. Um, you can email me. My, it's uh, gtrshredder87 at gmail. 
um, or message me on Facebook directly. I do try to answer all the emails and um, sometimes I get to them faster than others, but uh, I do try to answer questions and uh, you know, provide a little bit of insight for, for other players who are looking to improve on their playing. So, until um, next time, uh, happy shredding.